Sifuna bona. Sifuna kwa sinyuga. Inti haba na lama kama. Na bani gazbao. Kwa bani shango uti.
Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. Song is Tagaskatito. I feel honored though I am full of awe because when you are requested to preach this place is not just a place you account to each and every word you utter and these days it is not just a, a joyful thing to just stand and preach because you have to be correct to the doctrine you are preaching. And even to listeners who are listening, they mustn't just listen, but they must also verify whatever that is teached or preached. So I feel very honored, though I am not coming often here, but I follow you saints. Every time I will go to your channel, and view the preachings and go to your Facebook page and, and view. Uh, this is a great platform. And I want to believe Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So, a new beginning upon Konza Corner. A time which upon Utina, Tis, Sesame, the name, Ea is Winnie, or Tika Sim Konza, or Wellisi. Lucky. Only Bangalore. Utiko Sim Konza, or Wellisi, Lucky. I meet at all. Yaban. Without wasting time, as I wanted. I'm given a topic, so I will teach a bit. So please bear with me. The topic or the theme that I'm given, it is, it is time or the times for the fulfillment of the Holy Scriptures. That is the theme I will be talking about. Uh, I have three main scripture readings that will be written based on this topic but it, as I will proceed preaching I will do a lot of paraphrasing because I want to be doctrinally correct Hallelujah Amen. Hallelujah Amen. Read with me the book of the prophet Habakkuk chapter 2 Read verse 1 to 3 
You may read it in English or Tosa. Another person can also open the first book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 10 to 12. And then the last one will be on Revelations, chapter 1, verse 3. La le la ni izi negu zengo si zime mokya. David was also having a position. I will stand. Do you think this means? I will stand my watch mm. and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. Set myself on the rampart. Any version? I will climb, climb up my watchtower and I will stand my, my great post. I will climb up to my watch tower. 
Watch tower. Tower is the highest place where a person sit and he is only see people. He's the only one who see people. Tower is the place that I can call it a fortress. Though it gives this person an advantage to see his enemy far. But at the same time, that tower is giving this person a place of refuge. Now, Abba Kuk, because he's under, he understands that he's not just living in good times, but he's living in bad times. He finds himself a tower so that he can see far. Tower can be torn spiritually, I can see. I can say, when he chose to remain in the tower, spiritually, when he's climbing up, he's actually coming closer to God. I will climb up to my tower, my watchtower, and do what? And stand at my guard post. Yes. And stand on my guard post. He's a watchman. A watchman is the person whose, whose eyes are open, having full understanding of occurrences of things based to their times and in their generation. Oh, Jesus, help me here. I will stand and be on guard. I'm a prophet, meaning I am taking a word from God. Therefore, I cannot be just found on the ground. I need to be at a place where my ears will not be disturbed. So that I can be able to hear the word of the living God loud, clear. So I chose to climb up. And as I climb up, I draw myself closer to God. What is going on after that? There I will wait mm. to see what the Lord says. This person is minding the business of the Lord. He's not waiting for himself or for big people, but he's waiting for the Lord. Why are good? You choose a high tower and be a guard. No, I am waiting for the Lord. There is something coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, my sister. And how he will answer my complaint. Because in the previous chapter, I complained about things that are happening. Now I am standing in the right position. So that I can receive the answers of what I was complaining about in the previous chapter. Yes, sister. Then the Lord said, mm. hey, Write my answer plainly on tablet mm. so that a runner can catch the correct message to others. Mm. Yes. This vision is for a future time. Thank you. Sit and write the vision that I will give you. Write it. Don't just listen to the vision, but write it down. So that whoever carries the vision, he must take it. Because the vision, in the coming of the vision to the to the carrier of the vision, oftentimes, man, let me not say oftentimes. Always the vision is not for the present times, but it is always of the future times. Now, Habakkuk, you are given a task to write the vision. But the vision is not for now, but it is for the future. The topic says it is the fulfillment. It is the time for the fulfillment of the Holy Scriptures. The reason why I read here, I am drawn 
by the pin. Fulfillment. Ika maeliti fulfillment is to see what was foretold coming into reality. Let me repeat. <sighs> Jesus. Fulfillment. Nothing is fulfilled if it is, it is, if, if it is spoken at present and happened at present. But what is fulfilled is something that was told in the past times. And then decades and centuries ago, it was told. Now when this time or set time has come, you see what was told coming into existence. Then it becomes a reality. Now God is giving an assignment to Habakkuk. Habakkuk, what I will deliver to you is the vision that has to be fulfilled in the future times. But before this vision is fulfilled, write it down so that whoever come across it, when he come across it, he must grab it and run with it because he's carrying something that will happen in future. Oh, Jesus, help me out. I'm on the topic, don't worry, you will feel it, you will see it. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Oh, yes. From this salvation, the prophets have inquired. Mark. Oh, yes. And Joe was alone. You know, could be a good time. Now, that is Peter talking about prophets. Prophets like Habakkuk. The Spirit of Christ spoke to them that there's somebody coming. He is a Messiah, the Christ, the Savior. So demonstrate. This is the this is the this is the generation when the prophecy was released, and that prophecy was released through prophets, and it was not. Their imaginations. They were not talking based on their imaginations. It was the spirit of Christ that came over them, revealing profound delicacy things about things that will happen in the future. And the center of the prophecy was Jesus Christ from his bed to his death to the center of the prophecy was about the end times because when the prophets prophesy about Jesus they were speaking about the end times the arrival of Jesus Christ was the beginning of the end times was the beginning of the last days but prophets the power of the Holy Spirit came over them it is only God who came to that it is only God who gives the activities of the future times now yeah. only God only God yes. it is only God Yo. We can reveal what's going to happen Future. in 2000 now. Oh, yes. I'll tell you why. Please bear with me. The spirit of prophets Jesus. Of, of Christ spoke about Christ. Oh, yes. I always imagine when I read the scripture, this prophet was sitting in his own bedroom. Oh, sorry. sorry, man. Was sitting in his own room or study room. Minding his own business, the spirit of God came to him. I want to believe that it came by a vision because the way they write what they see, they write it in a fine print. It is not like there are somebody whispered in their ears, it is like something that they saw playing in front of them, and as they as it is playing. They 
they write notes because they can see and the prophets can take you into the sea to see the environment to feel the atmosphere and also the prophet I'm challenging you when you read the prophets when you listen to them you can hear the attitude of the spirit that that they, they were possessing that they were possessed with so the prophet will tell you in detail it is like they're sitting and see the the screen playing and as they were looking hey man this is christ oh this yes is, this this is the superman a great man born this is god in the flesh <laughs> born by the virgin and he writes i saw a virgin that is now the prophet after he saw the vision i saw a virgin being pregnant a virgin underline being pregnant a virgin somebody who didn't ever have an intercourse but the prophet can say that the person was pregnant in the vision he was a, a virgin but he was she was pregnant and he, she gave birth to this to the man called Christ and the prophet wrote now Peter he was not there listen to how the spirit connects times and seasons hey but when I'm rushing you tell and rush it and listen how the spirit facilitating the holy scriptures because I'm I'm explaining now the holy scriptures look how the spirit of god facilitating the writing the writing of the of the word of god peter is was born here far but you can see the prophets the way they were eager because when you listen to that writer he says the prophets after they received the prophecy they search with eagerness about okay okay i see the vision okay i see the but now when 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 is it going to happen for i want to know why you want to know i want to position myself hallelujah when the vision is coming to fulfillment i don't want to be left behind i want to be in the right position hallelujah my god so he sit and search he will prophesy after the prophecy he will sit and pray and groan and search by his spirit what time yes i agree it is a vision but when is it going to be fulfilled that was what matters to them is the fulfillment is the time of the fulfillment of the visions of prophecy as Habakkuk said write it write it down and put it there so that whoever come across can take it and run with it because it is set to come into fulfillment at a set time
I said, what do you say, Holy Spirit? He said to me, look at how I do things. He took me out of the universe. I'll demonstrate. This is the universe. God is not living in the universe. He's living outside the universe. That is why he is an authentic author to write scriptures. Because he's sitting outside the universe. He orchestrates and perpetrates seasons. He brings generations in the universe within time, though he's out of time. But before he will bring a, 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 a generation on a particular time, he will write what will happen to that generation. Uncle he brought our first parents, Adam and Eve, in time. And he lived outside time. I'm substantiating this point. After he brought them in, they disobeyed God and fell. Now look at God. God came in that generation and he spoke, releasing a prophecy. When he was cursing the snake, that curse was not only related to the snake, but it was an introduction of Jesus Christ that will come in the future times. Oh, Jesus, help me here. Because he said to the snake, now that you deceived the woman, the offspring of the woman will crush your head. Do you want to tell me that it was just a statement? It was not a statement. But it was a prophecy that yet at this time, you snake, you have overcame evil, but in future times. Oh yes, oh yes. The prophecy was released right in the beginning, but it was not going to be fulfilled in the, in, the, in, in the time of evil. Because God is living outside time. He knew that after evil, there will be another generation coming. Another generation coming. Another generation coming. But right at the end of time, in the last days, the prophecy that was released in the beginning will be fulfilled in the last times. Oh, hallelujah. When you read, you read, read or you go to the start of band school, there's a module that all the learners learn theology. Another module, theology is the study or doctrine of God. Another module is Christology, is the study or a doctrine of Christ. Another module is pneumatology, a study or a doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Another one is soteriology, the study and the doctrine of salvation. But let me take theology. When I explain why I say God is an authentic writer of the scriptures, the Bible is attesting to what I say. Paul, to the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, if I'm not mistaken, Paul defined the scripture. He says, the scripture is a God breath word given to man so that man can be rebuked, corrected, so that man can be kept online if that person is a believer. So, the Holy Scriptures we're talking about is the book written, is the word of God in writing. It's not a spoken word. It 
was spoken and there were ears listening, carrying the pen and paper. They listened and God talk, talk, talk. They take whatever God was saying, put it in the paper so that me and you can have it. Holy Scriptures. So he's an authentic writer because he's an omniscient God. When I say he's an omniscient God, I mean he's all-knowing God. He knows everything past. He knows everything present. He knows everything in the future. Yes, Lord. Look at it one, the way I see it. God is here. That's how I see it. How do you know the future? How do you know what is happening in the future? No, Nugwani. As I'm sitting talking to you now, I'm also in the future. I see everything. As I'm sitting here in this generation, I don't know what kind of generation that is coming, but God knows that after my generation, there will come another generation. Therefore, he is authentic to tell me what will happen to the next generation. Because as he is here, he is also in the next generation. So he is an authentic author of the Bible called Holy Scriptures. Please lift up your hand if you if you say it's time to go. I enjoy what God is speaking now. As I'm sitting here, he's all he's all he's speaking. Generations come with seasons. That is why things that are happening in the past generation are not the same as things happening in this generation. Why seasons are different? Amen. Seasons are different. This generation is living in a in a specific season. Oh, this is great. It's living in a specific season. And as it is living in a specific season, things that are happening in this season are relevant to this generation. And it is according to God's will that I am in this generation. And it was God's will that David was in that generation. That is why you hear Paul says, David served God's purpose in his own generation. And he was placed to death. Why? He was appointed for his generation to prepare, to carry the will of God in his own generation. In that season, Children, 
but the hand of God will come and bring that 18 year old up and he becomes outstanding he will become on top of his peers and he will command attention every man will look at him who is this Joseph when I look to each life of any figure in the Old Testament I don't see that figure that person I see God in the operation of that person okay let me go deeper God has got a spiritual principle where he said in Genesis I gave you Adam and Eve a place of jurisdiction a place of your rulership a place where you have to exercise your authority you are in charge on the earth affairs because you are wearing an earthly material and according to my principle a legal individual or being who's supposed to be in the affairs of the earth he must wear a flesh and blood and pain and love. No being. We have to come and rule on earth if he does not have the flesh and blood. That being, be it in the spiritual, he is in the wrong place. You must know. You must deal with that being. So God comes on earth through the human vessels. Devil also on his side, he comes on earth through the human vessels. That is why you, you see people being possessed. When you lay hands, they will manifest. It is devil inside. He can never flow as a spirit and walk and move. He needs an earthly vessel. So when God invading the earth on a particular generation to serve a specific purpose, he does not send angels. If he sends angels, the angel will come to me. The angel will say, hey, I'm sent by God. You are a Nazarite. You are appointed. An angel will carry the word. <gasps> and then that person will become outstanding. Why? Because the hand is upon him. And as he is moving, he's no longer living to accomplish his purpose. He's living to accomplish God's purpose. As he moves, when you ask him, Why are you moving to this generation? He will say, It is not by my choice. There is a purpose I carry. Why are you sitting down when people are standing? No, it is not by my will and choice, but I carry a divine purpose. So when people are standing, if the purpose say I must sit, I will sit. So go. generation and speak to that generation in reference most of the time to the future times let's take Noah Noah came when people were corrupt evil and wicked that man was old mm. talking now about the fulfillment of scriptures it's not the first time that the scriptures are fulfilled but I want us to look at the attitude and how things are work out when time, when the scripture is fulfilled. That is my interest. So I'm taking you to events past so that we can see the patterns. So that we can be able to position ourselves in this time because we are living in the last days and the scripture is fulfilled in these last days. Yes, Lord. No one was minding his own business, sitting amongst men, 
living nicely, healthy every day. God came by His word. Spent two minutes and did an encounter. I observe when I read the scripture. When God comes to man, He comes through His word. When God comes to man, even that man, even that, even if that man is a prophet, but when God comes to him, he comes through his word. Let me rephrase. When God comes to man, he allowed the man to have an encounter with his word. God can never use a person if that person didn't encounter his word. I repeat. Embrace a vision. 
you must fast put the vision into the scrutiny right word of the word of God because the devil can also camouflage and come to you the devil can also put on a garment of an angel and speak to you so before anything no one can walk with God if that person doesn't have the encounter with his word let me go further and say as we walk you have an encounter with God through his word what keeps you on the line what keeps you on the line so that you may be able to save your generation is when you take what you have encountered, which is the word, and put it on upon your head to be an absolute authority over your life. You missed the at the point. I don't want to, I don't want to just go. Let me repeat it. You meet the you meet God with his word. You succumb to his word. You become in relationship with God through his word. Now you are in the journey to save his purpose in your generation. What helps you to continue on your track? What helps you to continue on your course? It is when you take the word that you have encountered in the beginning of your journey with God. You take that word to become the absurd authority over your life. Let me quote the verse so that you understand me. Joshua, listen. I want to be correct. Joshua, my servant Moses died dead. Now, be his successor. And Joshua said, yes, Lord. But after he said, yes, Lord, God took the scroll. Never. Now, you have an encounter with the word and you agreed just like me and you, to work with God and serve his purpose. Now, you have say yes, take the scroll, take my word. That is God giving Joshua. Take this word. Let this word not depart from your lips. Meditate this word. Because your success and your prosperity is a poor. Let me rephrase it. Let me close. I'm gonna pick up on your corner, but I'm bringing you to where I'm getting to. Meditate to this world. Let this world not depart from your from you. The word meditate, you know what it means. Because it's a term that is common, but spiritually carries so much weight. All faiths, songing God, they are standing, their power is in, in meditation. Look at 
me. That is meditation. You are taking your spirit like a sponge. And the word is the water. You take your spirit, you push it in the water.
is because the universe itself comes from the word. So his sustainability is in the word. His main, its maintenance is in the word. For for the universe to be upholded needs the power of the word of God. So for therefore, for me and you in this generation. I'm not expecting you to be excited, you know? I like you like this. I like you to be quiet like this. Because God said to me, this is an opportunity to what he deposited to me to bring it to other people. I know you have it, but I'm reinforcing it. The reason why, if we want to keep our way to, be, to remain on track, we need the word to have an absolute authority over our heads. David is, has, has, there, there is a testimony about him. The Bible says in the, in the book of Acts, David served God's purpose in his own generation. And after he has finished with no record, red tape, they took him in honor and place him with his forefathers. Now let's come back. Why David? How did you manage to serve God's purpose in your generation? Listen to David's Psalms 103, if I'm not mistaken. You will come across a verse there that what David says, I take the word of God as a light. Oh, that's a lot. What is it, David, that helps you to serve God's purpose in your own generation? No, look on it. I talk the word. Every time I walk, I take the word to become the light on my path. In another verse, he says, I heard. Did you come across with that verse? I heard. God's word in my heart so that I may not sin against God. Why do I I took the word. I put the word of God to be an absolute authority over my life. Ah. I'm telling you, I'm talking to the generation here. Yeah. Yeah. A very sophisticated generation. Mm. Yes, Lord. <sighs> what is happening to a person, tell to a man, who is called, appointed to serve God, to serve God's purpose? Hmm. I'm particular with terms here, not because I'm good in the speaker. But I want you to notice something as I speak. I use term appointed. What helps a person? There's a person that every time I read about him, he was appointed for a specific purpose in the book of Judges. This man, his name is called Samson. Now, I'm putting a figure in front of us to see or to show us the danger of not living your life where the, the word of God is your authority. Yeah. Even the church. Let me put aside, let me not pass personal. Let me also speak about churches now. When the church neglected the authority of the word that church will have false prophets that church demons will dance why the word has no authority the bible is teaching me men of god and the bible says the word 
of God is the spirit. I don't know. I'm getting a The word of God is the spirit. When the prophets, false prophets, prophesy, they use spirit. Now, when the word of God has got an authority over the church, the word is the spirit. No other spirit can lift up its head. When the word has got authority. Yes, God. Okay. Let me fast forward. Read with me. The attitude. The time is finished. The attitude. There must be an attitude from that from the generation where that lives in the fulfillment of, of the scriptures, I would say of the prophecy. Because the way the word comes out, it comes out in pro in prophecies. Like now we are reading the book of Revelations. So in the book, we are reading the book of Revelations, but most of the things that are in the book of Revelations are not yet fulfilled. But we are reading them here now. So the way the, the Bible is acting up is unfolding, if I may use that term, is unfolding using prophecies. The prophet will come and prophesy for the next generation. Mm. When that next generation comes, the, the prophet, the prophecy will be fulfilled and God will release a prophecy for the next generation. Hey, mm. Now let us look at the attitude of generations. When the prophecy is fulfilled. <laughs> because I look and I saw patterns. Let's take Noah. Noah stood and prophesied that no gumbe heaven rain is coming. And people look at Noah. Say, hey, the Bible says Noah prophesied and preached the prophecy for 150 years. <sighs> They received the prophecy. They didn't care about how and when this prophecy will be fulfilled so that they can position themselves. Yeah. They're always saying, no, this, this is an old man lying. And Lokum, they came and they were not aware. Man. All of them mm. perished. Only Noah's family because Noah was a believer. They lived under the instruction, the command of Noah, so they were saved. I'm bringing an attitude of generations when the prophecy is fulfilled, when the scripture is fulfilled. Here is the, here is the attitude. People, they don't care. They care when they see. of Joseph trying to, 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 to delete others. Look at Joseph. He saw a dream that is prophecy. When he spoke to his brothers, they doubted. And God confirmed the dream prophecy will be a king. Because prophecy comes in, for individuals, comes for nations, Comes for the world. Some prophecies are about destiny. <laughs> Some prophecies are about destiny. Just like Joseph, a little boy, 18 year old boy, he received a dream. He's not coming from a royal family, but the prophecy came and said, Hey, you'll be a king. And his father and mother and brothers didn't, didn't believe, but the prophecy was released. As the prophecy was released, I like the attitude of this man. He took the prophecy and hid it. Now this is the attitude that I want us to wear. He took the prophecy and hid it. He didn't speak to anyone. And that prophecy about him in the future, the prophecy was about him in the future. The 
the prophecy was saying to him there is a version of you coming mm. now as, I, as people look at you they look at you as a boy a useless boy in front of your being but as God I see you in the future but take it in the future you will not be just a meek boy you will be a king when the prophecy comes every time the prophecy comes you look as, 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 as the pastor was saying you look at the circumstance current circumstances, uh, situation conditions and you deny it no no no, no not me no 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 not me but the prophecy is not for now it's for the future I want us to carry this attitude of Joseph he took the prophecy this man he kept quiet he said his father I want to believe that he was a man who, a, a, a prayer warrior because you can never have a prophecy and keep it without prayer no some of us here as you sit here even myself when I was a young boy I was, I was born again when I was 18 years on the second year of my work, of my salvation I started seeing myself standing in front of multitudes preaching and I was like oh I am scared of him to sit and and testify but in the dream I will see myself prophesying oh, God. and I was like hey, is it me in the dream no 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 but I took the prophecy just like Joseph I kept quiet I find a place of prayer because I was in God just like prophecy to see the fulfillment of prophecy he was challenged he was drawn into many things but he didn't buy in why just Joseph you didn't sleep with that woman I carry a prophecy Somebody talk to me about my future time. Hey. Joseph, the woman was naked, beautiful, fit. But you, you, you chose to leave your, your coat. Instead of getting into the room, Joseph will tell you, my flesh wanted to go into the room. But I remember I'm not just a man. I remember that I am appointed to my generation. I have a prophecy. There is a future time coming for me. The version of myself now will be different in the future. Jesus. You know. Then do you go? This is the heavens. This is the earth. Here on earth in 2023. You are this version. But listen, the heavens. They see a different version. In heaven, you are not the version that you are here. But then, there is a version that you image. The heavens will make sure that they will drive you for that perfect version to image. Sometimes you go to temptations, just like Joseph. Sometimes they will throw you in the pit here. You are being shaped. God is bringing the fashion in the heavens. He's bringing you to the earth so that when the set time has come,
when the time is fulfilled tell about the end make sure that the version the version that the heavens are in versaging for you is in you when the prophecy is fulfilled when all these challenges are coming for you don't buy in don't take a detour remain on track this temptations this insults they are busy creating a version that the heavens are waiting for god is using these conditions in your life to shape you because you carry a purpose you have a dream you have a vision that will emerge in future times but that vision doesn't need this version of you it needs a version in the first class so Joseph didn't mind anything he said in jail he said he didn't complain why Joseph I carry a purpose somebody is working out my way I know how I will become that is the that is the attitude that we supposed to have I know that I will who I will become I know that I'm a prophet I might not know now the scriptures but I saw myself in the dream prophesying I might not be a preacher now but I saw myself in the vision carrying the mic speaking to multitudes I will wait for the same time. What is the attitude you're supposed to have? <sighs> In closing, please read the book of Joel. Okay, read Acts 2 17. Let us leave Joel, it's fine. generation now. But where? It is the time of the fulfillment of the Holy Scriptures. Listen. Peter was making or paraphrase or quoting the prophet, the words of the prophet Joel far before this happened. He stood in front of more than 3,000 people in Jerusalem. He quoted the words of the prophets and he said, In, in the last days, Mark, God says, Mark, When is the last days? It is, it is the fulfillment of the Holy Scriptures. When is the last days? When is the last days? These are the last days. When the last day began, I'm asking you, when the last day began, when Jesus Christ was born, you will hear Paul in his, when he writes to churches, he will say, when, when the set time has come, God revealed the mystery, who is Jesus Christ, in the last days. So, last days began when Jesus Christ was born. Now, as we sit at here, we are in the last days. According to the scripture, what must we expect in the last days? That is the attitude that we're supposed to have. God has prophesied about my time. What must I expect? Read it for us. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Mm. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Yes. 
Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In the, in the last days, what will happen in one word? I will pour out my spirit on all people. In one word. What will happen in the last day? In one word. Is the manifestation of the power of God. That is in one word. And it's his, sorry for saying, it's his manifestation will be multifaceted. And at the conference, will be multifaceted. It's conference staff. Some, when the spirit manifests, they will see visions. When the spirit manifests, some will see dreams. Why are you seeing dreams? It is the season. It is the fulfillment. That is our answer to the nation. When they say the name coming back, we are king. How did you manage to do this? It is my life. It is my season. You miss it, huh? When the blind see and people mother and they come to you, pastor, how did you manage? It is my season. Because I'm living in the last days. In the last days, there will be manifestation of the power of the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Last days. Thank you, Jesus. Last days. How do you see that you're partaking? Listen to me. Please. Oh. How do you see that as you're in this generation, how do you see that you're partaking? How do you see that you're partaking? You have you are one of those who are appointed to partake. I see because the power of God is manifesting to me. How do you see that you're partaker of the blessing of the past of the last days? I say because I am not left behind. When God wants to speak, He will come to me. And put him and put me in front of of people of unbelievers. He will put his light on me by the power of the Spirit. I will I will speak things that I don't know. Yes, yes. That prophecy was relating to the church. Again, there is another prophecy. That relates to the unbelievers. Read and finish that song. In she the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Thank you. I'm not sure. Where are you in this? I'm not here, Bazalone. I'm the mouthpiece of God. Where are you in this? I'm asking. Are you living in the last days? If the answer is yes, where are you in this? Because the Bible says, I will out, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. The flesh that is cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Because the spirit of God cannot dwell in an unbeliever. So this prophecy was for the church. Now the question is, where are you here in this? Okay. Read second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. With no excitement. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Mark the theme says it is 
the fulfillment of the Holy Scriptures. The Nicola thing, and just say on a match. In the last days, for the believers, they will be filled by power. And God will manifest through them because God is seeking for a human vessel. God is pursuing, following your church, following you, seeking you because you are a human vessel. He needs to deposit his power so that you may prophesy, see visions, dream dreams, speak and preach the gospel, raise the sheep, heal those. Hallelujah! That is for the church. Again, in the same generation, listen to this. Because this God is carrying so much weight. In the same season, in the same generation, we see two prophecies that will be fulfilled. Read this one. But prophets, there will be terrible times in the last days. Verse 2. People will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful. Proud. Abusive. Disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful. Unholy. Verse 3. Without love. Unforgiving. Slanderous. Without self-control. Brutal. Not lovers of the good. Chapter 4. Verse 4. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lover of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Verse 5. Yes. Having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Sit down. My sermon is like My message is stopped here. I took out a lot of stuff due to time. But now I'm displaying in front of us two prophecies. I'm not sure. I'm displaying to you two prophecies that is that are meant or that are being fulfilled in the same generation, in the same season. This side is God using human vessel to manifest his power and that prophecy is for you and me. I asked you where are you in that prophecy? Because it is its own time to be fulfilled in your life and my life. Now on this side, on my left we see again the same, to the same generation and season another prophecy that there's a generation coming in the last days this, gener this generation. Oh, I'm not sure if he's not here now in the church. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But here in the church, they will come. They are the lovers of money. They are people who, are, who, who lack self-control. They are unholy. Hey. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Let me sit here. Closing my message. Pastor, I'm also a pastor. I am not sure. I am not sure if the prophecy for the believers is not here in the church. Why am I saying this? I say the church. Sitting in dry season at a room. We are in the dry season, in the season of plenty. Hey, was an How to rephrase this? Let me bow down. Show my humility to the church because I'm not speaking on my own. Oh, Jesus. I say the church being in a dry season where are the fountains of the spirit of God I rest in abundance but the church is sitting in dryness when I look at the Holy 
spirit in any angles. Can you tell me? Hey, Jesus. Do you know now I'm full of pain? I'm the man appointed. My heart, my soul, and my spirit is in the fulfillment of God's purpose about my life and about whatever that I rub a shoulder with. If I rub a shoulder with you, my agenda is to take you. And I will say to you, let us go to the master and ask him, where we are? Where are we? Which position in his agenda that we carry? If I'm, if I'm in partnership with you, the only thing I do is to take what is in my spirit, deposit it to you. I make you aware, hallelujah, of what God desire, what time we are living in, what places that are released by God. I see the church walking in the fighting, but what is the time? What is the time? What is the time? What is the time? Oh, my man. I see the Holy Spirit. I see the fountains released. Holy Spirit is wondering what is going on to the church I am given to. Say, where are their hearts? Because in me, fountains are released. In whatever angle you see me, there is a fountain. You will never come to me to go back to us. No. It is time for the fulfillment of the scriptures. What is the season? What is the time? In closing, Oh, Holy Ghost. Do you know? I want to I want to give you an assignment. Do you know that every time when every time where prophecy is fulfilled? Jesus in 
get him up. Oh. It was the fulfillment of purpose, of prophecy. Grace was released in the garden of Gethsemane. Joseph, when the set time has come, grace was released. He was a prisoner. The time came. The time came. And God said, It is the fulfillment of your time. When the time is fulfilled for your purpose to come to start to resume, kings will pursue you. Prime ministers will look for you. What is that man? What is that man? Joseph was in the prison, sitting quietly. Grace was released. Because the season has came. When season came, God released the grace. The king looked for Joseph. He was seated in the, in the prison. He said, Look, we are looking for a man called Joseph. And he said, It is me. Follow me. Where I'm going, you are needed in the palace. Why? It is the fulfillment of prophecy. Your time has come. Now, oh, where is the king? Oh, the king said, Is your name Joseph? Joseph said, Yes. Okay. There's an operation that you need to do. But before that, take all the clothes. Take the clothes. There's no longer a prisoner. Put a new clothes. I want to prophesy as I'm standing here. When your season comes, the righteous, the man that I have as a